Welcome to Code Rush Feature of the Week. Okay, Mark, what have we got this week? We're going to show you Code Rush markers this week. First, I want to introduce you to the code, get you familiar with at least the code that's on screen now. Okay. I have a couple uh, event handlers here for when the mouse comes in and when the mouse leaves. And inside there, I'm calling, uh, I'm making a call to animate scale. You can see it here. It's down here at the bottom of the screen yep. right here. And inside that animate scale call, I'm also calling get double animation, um, which you can see is up here. So all sure. of these are essentially on screen right now. Now, sometimes when I'm writing code, I want to make a change and uh, somewhere else and then come back. And, uh, and that might be the case in this code as well. So to do that, mm -hmm. what I'll often do is I will get to the location that I want to change. Uh, maybe I'm right here. And if I'm just using plain old Visual Studio, I would hit Control KK. And you'll notice off to the left, we've got a little bookmark here. And um, so we've got a bookmark at this location. And then uh, I might go wherever else I need to be in the file or maybe in another file, that sort of thing. And then to pick it up or to go back to that location of that bookmark, I would hit Control KN like this. Sure. Okay. Ooh, and, okay. and at first we might be thinking, wait, we're not where we started, but we actually kind of are. But it takes a little bit of time. Remember before we had our event handlers were on screen, right? Get yes. double animation was on screen. It's still here, but it's way up near the top before it was down below in the in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. It used to look like something like that, right? But when it we did, yes. when we jumped to that bookmark, Visual Studio scrolled it up for us, which um, uh, made it harder to recognize where we were. Now, so that's that's kind of what markers. So this is the problem: this idea of getting back to where we were and getting you in that mindset quickly. This is the problem that markers solve. So instead of hitting Control KK, uh, I'll hit just simply Alt plus the home key. And you can see right there underneath the uh, flashing caret is the marker symbol. So now that I've got the marker here, I'm going to now go somewhere else. I'll move somewhere else throughout my code. Um, and now I will just simply hit Escape to get back. And there you can see that it's restored that location for me, right? The original drop location, wherever that is. Sure. So I can put this up at the top, for example, drop a marker and now go somewhere else, even in the same file, hit escape, and it restores not only the caret position in the file, but also the view position. That's particularly nice. I mean, I, I, it, it's like the mark, sorry, the, the bookmarks give a partial solution. They do get you to a location, but as you say, it's not positioned on screen where you'd expect. And there can be a lot of context associated with that, visually on screen, um, methods that relate to each other, that call one another. I, I often have very close to each other because it helps to break out the problem sometimes. And, and to have that missing when you come back is a little strange. Indeed, in your example here, you've got a different overload for get double animation. And if I came back using a bookmark, I might look at the wrong copy. Oh, right. right? And I Down might start here. changing things, right? Um, but with the markers, we get that proper full context restored. Right. Also, the visual element's very much better. The bookmark's over there on the left, and I, I kind of have to go look there and find, well, where is the line I, I'm clearly restoring to? Then I've got to track back across to the right and find the thing I'm interested in. But right. when you came back here with the escape, the beacon, as we've called it before, literally draws my eye in from wherever it is. It's almost, I can't help it. And there's right. no conscious effort in doing that. It's right. absolutely brilliant. What you're describing when you move your eyes to the left to find that icon, right? That's directed. Yeah. You're directing your eyes. It's There's a cognitive load. And we're usually not aware of it, right? But what happens is, is as we experience these cognitive loads, these tiny cognitive loads, they wear on us, right? They suck up a little yeah. extra energy. And overall, I think they impact how long you can keep going right, and writing code um, before you get fatigued, right? Yeah. And so the other thing that I don't like about having to move your eyes all the way to the left is, look, it's there's nothing else of interest out here that where your eyes would already be, no. right? You're, you're, you want to be in the code, not way over here on the left. Um, the other problem is, is once you're on the left, and you've now got to say, okay, let's now move my eyes along this line, which is not an easy thing to do either. Right. Indeed. To then get out. Right. We're, we're trying to do we're So our cognitive load is up high again. One yeah. more one more thing with the bookmarks. Notice that bookmarks is still there. Right. I'll drop a, a code rush marker right here. We'll go up to the top of the file. I'll hit control K N. 
Notice that when it centers it right here vertically in the screen, it also puts the carrot at the beginning. The it bookmark does. in Visual Studio does not remember that my carrot was out here. Whereas the Code Rush one, if we come up here and hit Escape, does remember. And so it puts the carrot right on the identifier you were at. Um, I find, by the way, that when I use markers and I go back and collect them like this, not only does it get me where I want and not only does it help me recognize where I was more quickly and with less effort, but it also triggers other memories that I had when I was looking at this code. Mm -hmm. For example, when I was looking at this code, I might have had a, a mini to-do list in my mind. Oh, I need to check for exceptions, for example, right? Yep. So I dropped a marker, I went somewhere else to maybe look at some other code, whatever I needed to do, maybe copy something, um, maybe double check to make sure we have coverage, whatever, maybe write a yeah. unit test. When I'm done, I hit escape to get back, and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember I told myself I needed to, to check for exceptions here, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So it allows you to kind of put your work on hold and go somewhere else, and then go back yeah. to the work that was on hold and restore it. Well, so it's like if, if, for example, there'd been a method in, sorry, a, a comment even in one of those other methods, because it's on screen, you'd have seen that comment, okay? And so it reminded you, ah, yes, I've got to go and do that thing. So you go and you do that thing. And when you come back here, you're trying to track back through your mental breadcrumbs and you're going, well, okay, what was I doing beforehand? Yes, I was here. And, oh, yes, I saw that comment. But if the comment was scrolled off the top now because you'd returned using bookmarks, you wouldn't have that piece of extra evidence. Right, Rory. So, for example, if we drop a marker right here, check for exemptions and all that code, that's right up there, right? We're down there. We drop that marker. We go somewhere else. We hit Control K N and the bookmark. It's gone, right? Yeah. So we go somewhere else. We hit Escape to jump back, and now it's up on screen. Now, let me show you something else that you can do. By the way, let's say we really wanted to not forget this. I can select text and hit the marker, the drop marker key. And now I've dropped a selected marker, which you can see there with the brackets on it. Nice. I can go somewhere else in the code and I can say, well, let's look at this too. Let's grab this and drop a marker here. And let's drop a regular marker here. So right? we're no longer remembering a point, or at least we're not for, not for every one of them. We're remembering right. an entire selection. Exactly. And then I can keep going. I can move into work in other files as well. Drop a marker here, drop a marker here, drop a marker here drop a marker up here. And as you might be thinking, wait, are these stack based? And the answer is yes, they are. And now I'm just collecting them by pressing escape. I'm going back to all those locations that uh, I specified in reverse order. That's why it's awesome for taking, taking the, the work that you have to do, putting a pin in it, sticking it off to the side and continuing on and then coming backwards. Right to get to to complete the work that you it's did. It's great. I, I particularly like the the different beacon animation when you've got a selection. With a normal beacon coming back to a point, naturally enough, those circles go in and and sort of coalesce in a single point. Right. With the selection uh, marker, they coalesce at the four corners of the the piece that's been selected. So you actually get told here is the start and here is the end, and you're actually focusing on the whole phrase. Yep. In fact, I can even come in here and I can say, let's do uh, a multi-line selection that looks like this, that starts uh, partway into a line and ends partway in a line. And when I collect it, you can see what's happening there. Oh, very right? nice. So that's what's going on there. Now, something else is happening. You may have noticed, hey, wait, he looks like he's going back and forth between two different locations. And I am. And this is a feature called swap markers. So normally to drop a marker, I hit hold down the Alt key and hit home. That's dropping a marker. But if I'm somewhere in the code and I hold the shift key down with that alt key and hit home, I will pick up the, old, the top marker on the stack and simultaneously drop one where I'm at. And now it essentially swaps the location of where I am with the top marker on the stack. And it just allows me to okay. get back and forth between two locations very quickly. Okay. Nice. Now I'll show you how, where this is practical. Let's say we're going in here and we want to access uh, this known body parts and grab some of these pieces that are inside here. Maybe we've got a sure. list of constants somewhere, um, that sort of thing. And over here in my uh, person class, maybe I want to create a new uh, a method that returns a Boolean um, is known uh, part like that. And inside okay. we'll pass it a string. 
I'm just using templates right here to create this code very quickly. There are other videos we've done on templates, uh, feature of the week videos. Go see feature, go see M for methods and V for variables. We'll call this part name. And uh, inside the code, we're gonna say if uh, part name equals, and we'll grab known body parts dot uh, part arm, like that. Uh, then we'll, and we might come down here, we might want to say like or, and that's a template as well. And let's just copy this, come down to the next page right here. But now instead of using IntelliSense, maybe this is a very, we'll present, pretend this is a very polluted, uh, busy class. And I just want to grab those things. In other words, say it had hundreds and hundreds of properties yeah. and methods, and those were hard and to find. And there are certainly classes like that in the framework, aren't there? <laughs> there are. Instead, I'm just going to hit Alt-Shift-Home. Um, oh, whoops, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit Alt-Home, and I'm going to drill inside of here, grab the next one I want, copy that to the clipboard, Alt-Shift-Home, come back, and paste it in like that, right? And so okay. I can kind of work my way down here. In fact, what I'm going to do is I can, um, I can paste a whole bunch of these down uh, um, I'm just using duplicate line here to just duplicate it a whole bunch of times, right? Do this. And now what I can do is uh, grab this, come back over the next one down, paste it, alt sw swap back over, come back over. So you're basically hopscotching between two different locations, grabbing the piece you need, coming back, pasting it into the location you want. and But you're not having to manually drop and collect markers in some predetermined sequence. This is just one keystroke that's taking you back to the last one, back to the last one, and switching between the two. Yes, that's exactly You could what... do this manually, right? You could do this in a sequence, but it would be far too complicated, even with our standard marker technology. So we give you this extra boost, this extra um, workflow that you can use. Yes, and, and that's what's cool about it, this idea of of going back and forth between two locations, moving each in each location, moving just a bit between each one, right? I can I can even go go backwards where I, this one I'm moving up and then this one I'm moving down, right? I'm just taking a move in each spot, going back and forth between those two locations. So that's swap markers. There's one other feature and that is sometimes useful and that's dr jump back and paste. So let's say that I'm here, I drop a marker and I find my way over to the thing I want to copy to the clipboard, right? And maybe I will come in here and we'll uh, create one more and we'll call this uh, eyes right here, like this and like that. So this is our new body part we've just added, right? So if I yep. want to go back and I know I want to paste, in other words, I know where the marker is, I know that the next thing I want to do when I get back is paste, I can just hold down the shift key when I hit escape to collect it. So just shift plus escape like that and it'll come back and it'll oh, paste nice. it for you right like that. So you can see Very that. Very good. So, um, so that is markers. Just quickly, I'll show you the options for this. So we go into options and uh, it's in editor all languages on the markers page. Uh, I've got drop, mar drop marker before jump selected. This will automatically drop a marker whenever I use Visual Studio's go to definition or go to reference commands. Also yep. on the quick setup page, you've got a marker set uh, option here where you can just turn it on or off. And inside the setup wizard, we've got a page in the setup wizard, probably the most visual of these options in terms of setting uh, where you can disable or enable markers and specify how you're going to collect them. And these are my settings here. And that's it for markers. Excellent stuff, Mark. Well, thank you very much. That was markers as our Code Rush feature of the week. We'll see you next week. For more feature of the week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.